Hi, everybody. This story is uh, from a contribution from Sophia, and here we go. Hi, Ali. I made a donation to your channel through PayPal. If you're reading this, then I hope you find the chance to make a video soon. I'm not really sure where exactly to begin with my story, so I will focus on what is currently happening in my life concerning my narcissistic mother. My husband and I are young, just finishing up college, and we were living with her and my dad for a few years. Eventually, I began to realize how abusive my childhood was, and my mom was trying, still trying to create havoc in my life. In the past several years in which I was living with her, she remained controlling, always playing the victim, and was attempting to sabotage my success in college. Other than influencing my dad to no longer spend money on my college tuition and instead use my college fund for her plastic surgeries, she frequently made sure to tell me how much she wished she never had any children and that I make her want to commit suicide. It is weird how she expects for me to lose myself and just make her happy. Well, it's weird if you're, if you're, uh, if you're not a narcissist, if you are a narcissist, then that's just what they do, you know, and with more and more plastic surgeries coming, coming along, coming down, uh, like you see what these, these narcissistic women do to themselves. They turn themselves into silicone monsters trying to hang on to their youth. And it's, it's even worse, you know, when, you know, the, for a daughter uh, of the narcissistic mother who's like this, because then you have that constant looks competition. Everything's about looks. You know, the sabotaging is generally based around looks, and because that's all the narcissist that that type of narcissistic mother is is you know is just looks based. That's all. That's all they are. That's all that sustains, and that's why they turn themselves into these silicone monsters trying to hang on to some some days of, of, of yesterday, the days of, uh, of, of the past, uh, trying to hang on to their youth like they're still in their 20s. In my last few years of staying there, I was setting boundaries and practicing different communication tactics to prevent her rages from escalating. Good luck with that. I planned on going no contact simply by just moving and never saying a word. In the last few months of staying there, even though I received grants to finish my education, I had a $900 tuition charge that I couldn't afford. My husband and I, my husband and I, I hate you, Axel. Sorry. Sorry about that. You can't pause a video, and he was going to keep doing that. So, in the in the last few months of staying there, even though I received grants to finish up my education, I had a nine hundred dollar tuition charge that I couldn't afford. My husband and I already had a move-in date set for an apartment, and we had bought our own furniture. I was wary of asking my dad since I knew my mom would throw a fit, but I wasn't sure about taking out unnecessary loans. I ended up showing my dad the tuition bill and he helped me out. After this, I'm pretty sure she poisoned my casserole that I had been saving in the refrigerator. I got extremely and painfully ill when I shouldn't have been ill from the leftovers that never make, made me sick when it was fresh earlier in the day and not tampered with. Ah, uh, yes, the narc who likes to, to poison your food, make you sick. Uh, it's another revenge tactic that is just, you know, and I've read many stories where, and it's always, it's always the female narcissist that does this, that likes to poison or make you sick through food. I feel like my suspicions were confirmed the next day when I attempted to throw all the food away. My mom kept crying and wondering how exactly it made me sick. This was really a whole separate thing, and it may sound crazy, but even as a child, I feared being poisoned by her. Unfortunately, even today, my health isn't that great. I have extensive neurological damage and pain from the widespread inflammation in my body without any known cause at the moment. Well, like, I guess like fibromyalgia. 
it wasn't until recently that I began to suspect my past with my mom and potential reasons for why my nerves and muscles become so become damaged so easily. Right. It could be, you know, fear, the anxiety causing a psychosomatic response because um, your body is going to respond to that fear and that anxiety somehow. Sometimes it manifests in pain, sometimes it just manifests in straight anxiety. You know, it's different, it manifests different ways for different people. In September 2015, it was finally time to move. We never told her our plans out of fear, fear of being sabotaged. Very smart. She knew we were moving because she had sneaked into our rooms and stared at our packed boxes occasionally. It was pretty obvious that we were moving because of the packed boxes, but we never said anything and she didn't know what day. The morning we moved, she had left for several hours and we had three people come and help us load the truck. Right when we had finished loading and we were ready to leave, she showed up and surprisingly showed her crazy in front of other people. Oh, I bet she did because you had outsmarted her and you got, she got there at the tail end, too late to do anything at that point, and she couldn't control her own narcissistic rage. Obviously, she claimed she never knew we were moving, and then she accused me of scamming her for money in reference to the tuition help that I needed. I should, and you should have said, yeah, no, that was the point. Yeah, you didn't know. That was the point because you would have done some type of bullshit like this, poison me, God knows what. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you never knew because I didn't tell you, you crazy bitch. I should have known asking for help would have blown up at my face later. She accused me of lying and using the money for other things. When this isn't the case and my dad knows that isn't because he saw my tuition bill right from the student account. <coughs> And it's pointless to stand there and fight baseless accusations to a narcissistic psychopath because, they, remember, they want the fight. They want the argument. Anything you say, they're going to turn around and they're going to twist it against you and twist it up anyway. The best thing to do, jump in the truck and leave. You're not going to get anywhere by arguing with her because she's never going to admit. Is your mother ever going to say, oh, yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. I was making, I'm doing this. I would pull it. She's never going to admit it anyway. And she's only going to use that and use your act, use the truth to twist. She's going to twist the truth to make you sound like you're paranoid and crazy. Anyway, we left and she still thinks that we aren't talking over a minor spat. And then the narcissist will do that. They will minimize in their own heads and to everything else. Oh, well, he just flew off the handle or she just flew off the handle over a little, a little spat, you know, family's fight. Bullshit. This is a pattern of behavior that has been going on in our lives and especially your life since you were born. But the, but the narcissist always minimizes it like this is a minor normal family thing. And that you're oversensitive or that you're crazy. That's, ju that's just another tactic. I know that deep down she knows the real reason why I do not have contact with her. Of course she does. Of course she does. That's why she's calling it a minor spat. Of course she does. I have been no contact for eight months now. All the texts go to a spam folder. But at first I looked at some. They were all the same crazy stuff she always says, threatening to commit suicide, guilt tripping me, playing the victim, I owe her because she birthed me, look how much she has done for me, etc. Okay, if she's putting suicide threats in text messages, you should call the police and have her Baker Act it. And what a Baker Act is, is you call and you say, listen, my mom's threatening to kill herself because I moved out. You don't even have to give her, give the police you know, the whole ins and out. My mom's suicidal because I'm not talking to her. I, but I'm not going to have her death on my hands. Here's the text message of her threatening suicide. And then police will go over and do, and do a welfare check. And, you know, they'll probably refer it to a social worker immediately. But if somebody's threatening suicide, they're going to Baker Act them. 
which is a 72, 72 hour psychiatric called, okay, for observation. Once you write I'm suicidal or I'm gonna commit suicide, they're gonna take you. All right, you have you have a couple cards here if she ever does that again, okay? Because at this point, too much time might have uh, probably passed. But if she does that again, if she's putting these threats and text messages of suicide or threats against you, first of all, I hope you're saving all your text messages from her anyway, which I'm pretty sure you are. But those text messages where she's threatening suicide, call the police next time. Next time you get one, call the police and say, my mother's threatening suicide. You should go over there and, and check on her and let them deal with it. And now to let her know that your fucking threats aren't going to work. Okay, I do have an outlet, and you can't just go making death, uh, suicide threats, okay, for your own purposes. Teach her a lesson for once. Over the past several months, I have been much happier than I have ever been in my life. Unfortunately, she has showed up to my husband's work two or three times. She has no idea where I live, even though we are still in the same city. Showing up to your husband's, to, to somebody's job. To somebody's job, and that takes a set of balls. But they do it. They try to get you fired because it's all about getting you under their control, whether it be emotional, financial, what have you. And making scenes at people's workplaces is a good way to do that. Because whether or not you've done something wrong at your job, your job could still fire you. For the drama, because what job wants to deal with all this freaking drama? They, in some some states, especially right to work states, you know, or in any state, you can be fired. Like even at Macy's, we had women that we had to let go, and I, I and I didn't agree with it. Who had domestic violence order of protection against their boyfriends or ex husbands or whatever? Okay, and. Based on the severity of some of those protection orders, we had to let the, the, the girl go because it put the safety of everybody who was working there in jeopardy. So that's why when these narcs blow up and do crazy shit, that you can, that, that sometimes you will lose your job. Okay, because it puts the safety of everybody because the boss doesn't know or human resources doesn't know how crazy this person is and who else is in danger. So they feel the safest thing to do is, is to remove the person from the building to protect everybody else. She has no idea where I live even though we are in the same city. Sometimes I wonder if I should explain to her the generational abuse patterns that I have noticed and point out how she abused, how she was abused so she can acknowledge the cycle, hopefully realize her wrongs and seek therapy for her personality disorder. If your mother is to the point where she's poisoning you, poisoning your food, she's gone. That's, that, that, that ship sailed a long time ago. That ship sailed and sucked, sunk to the bottom of the North Atlantic years ago. It's at the icy, the icy bottom of the Atlantic. You are not changing somebody who's at the level of poisoning you, okay? Not paying for your, not helping out with your college, paying, taking your money to pay for plastic surgery for herself. When are you going to explain, when are you going to have this sit down conversation in between poisonings and plastic surgeries? The woman's done. The ship is sailed. You're only going to waste your breath and and possibly give her more ammunition to attack you with. Even if she seems like she's listening to you at first. She's not. She's not. She's compiling information to better figure out how to use it against you in the future. It's just a slight tactic change, even if she does take that route. But I'm telling you, this woman, her ship has sailed a long time ago. But I'm not so sure I even want her in my life because I do not believe she can ever change. A 53-year-old narcissistic woman who has been set in her ways her entire life and believes that she is perfect, yeah, I just don't see how she could ever change. Thank you, she can't. She really has created this false reality in which she is the victim and I am the one being mean to her. Yeah, they all do that. They all, they're always the victim. 
they're always the victim and you're the and you're the cause for all their problems. You're not going to explain to her saying, well, oh, well, you're a victim too, mom, because, you know, years ago you were abused, but you're still making the active decision to poison my food, okay? To poison my food. You're not getting through to that ever. She should be in jail for something like that. After going no contact, she started a smear campaign against me in which she found my in-laws and friends on Facebook. She told my father-in-law things like, I only show him my good side and I'm really a terrible person. She also said that I will only come to them when I need money. It reminded me of what she used to say throughout my entire childhood. Even in elementary school at parent-teacher conferences, the teachers always had good things to say, only good things to say about me. She would tell them that it was all an act, and at home I was some evil child. So even at school, she's telling your teachers that you're this piece of shit. And that's what Drunky the Fuck Cloud did to me. But again, this woman targeted you from childhood. She targeted you as being a bad person as a child, much like my parents did to me. And when you're actually put that tag of being this deceptive, lying child, and then your mother tells and your parents tell everybody this, you, you and someone begin to believe it. And I talked about this before. And then you think you're bad, and you think you're evil, and you're the only one that can't see it. Because at the time, you don't even understand what narcissism is. You think, this person's my mother, they must, they're smarter than me, they must see something I don't. This is terrible, and this is pretty much almost exactly what I went through. And she wasn't joking. She seems to be jealous of me, especially with the ways in which she tried to get me to quit college over the years. She never did anything with her life, was a stay-at-home mom who never cleaned or cooked, just stared mindlessly at the TV or computer all day, or compulsively buys more crap she doesn't need that can't even fit in her home anyway. Ah, uh, another hoarder. Another hoarder, everybody. Another hoarder who doesn't cook, doesn't clean, sits on her fat ass, watching TV, buying shit. Hoarding. Again. At the start of this semester in January, right when college started after break, she, just, she decided to send my mother-in-law a Facebook message, and she also popped into my husband's work again, asking him when he can see me, as if it's up to him anyway. I told him... I told him he needs to tell her never. The face, your husband needs to cut her off as well. Your husband needs to just be like, get out. Get out. This is my wife. I stand by my wife. She wants nothing to do with you. I want nothing to do with you. All right? And your husband should. Yeah, I'm not telling you how to run your marriage. But your husband should say like, and I believe you poisoned her. Now get out. Now get out. The Facebook message was meant to make me mad and stressed right when college was starting. Right, more sabotage. They're very vindictive and they're very calculating. I then realized what she was doing and how it was so weird she doesn't try to make contact for months and then suddenly tried when I am starting my, my last important semester. I made a rule. I told my sister-in-law and friend to to not tell me my mom's messages and told my husband not to tell me if she stops by his work because I knew what she was trying to do. Tell your husband to tell her, don't come by my work. As far as what you said to your sister-in-law, very smart as well. And I would tell your freaking in-laws, like, look, I would sit down with your in-laws if you haven't already, and I would lay this all out for them. And I would tell them, like, look, this woman's going to continue and continue and continue with the lies and deceptions. And what she's doing is planting these little seeds that you don't even realize she's planting in there for them to be activated at some later time. And it's usually some throwaway comment, okay? But but it's a lie, but it changes the whole complex, it changes the whole the whole scenario of the situation. Um because what the narcissist will do is there is a lot of truth in the stories they tell. That's how they're so convincing. But those lie seeds are so 
vindictive and so destruction it changes the narrative completely and that's why they're so they're so dangerous because they're planted in there at an earlier time okay to be sprouted later so and I would tell your in-laws or I would ask your in-laws please stop talking to this woman please because it's just killing my life it's killing who I am. It's killing my life. I want to finish school. And this woman has done nothing but torture me since I was a child. It is hard to be no contact when people are just like, hey, guess what your mom just said? I told everyone to just instead to instead just save her messages in case I need them, need them one to or ask for them. Very smart. Very smart. Just say, like, hold the messages, don't tell me about them. If there's a death threat in there or something, then let me know. If there's some kind of real threat in there where, you know, where they're going to try to come after money or safety or something like that, tell me. Besides that, if it's just that I'm a piece of shit, then I, I don't need to know that. I've heard that my entire life. I got it. I got it. She thinks I'm a piece of shit. I'm a liar. I'm a horrible person. Got it. Got it. We're good. Check off the box. Don't need to hear it anymore. You got something else for me? Fine. This year, I also received a message from one of my older brothers. My oldest brother is the golden child, and then my second oldest, the middle child, was the scapegoat along with me. I was usually the one to hide away as a child, but he was always the one who got the worst of the scapegoating and was labeled as the family problem. He's the family problem, but she's been telling your teacher you're a piece of shit too. So it sounds like she don't like any of don't like any of her kids. He contacted me although we never have been close. He's kind of a sociopath and although we see eye to eye on certain things, I can't be his friend because he's just because he can be just as manipulative. Probably because he probably picked up all of her tactics. He rarely talks or he rarely talks to or sees our parents, yet yet he had heard from them that I no longer speak to them. Well, they'll reach out to anybody when the shit hits the fan. You know, they'll go to anybody who will still somewhat talk to them and try to try to recruit them. He approached me by texting that he hates our parents and he thinks they have been abusive. To some extent it, it has been good knowing that they are on the same page and he is not acting as my mom's spy like our oldest golden brother is. Still be careful with him. He might be on your side, but he might, she could still turn on me on a dime because that's what happened with me and my brother. But in March or April, I happened to mention something about, about my mom to my sister-in-law. So she asked if it was okay to tell me something that my mom had said. She told me the gist of it was that my mom had wrote my mother-in-law that they are seriously considering taking me out of their will and they made it sound like they were hoping this message would get back to me in order to scare me and change my mind. Sweetie, you're not getting any of that money in that will. Nobody is. And I've made video after video about those wills. They always go to the will. That's, that's one of their last tactics. Oh, I'm going to cut you out of the will. If you need their money, in the will, if you really want that will money, then why are you in college? Then why are you sacrificing so much now to get your education with your husband and going through all this shit to break for a goddamn will? You're not getting that, that will money anyway, regardless. I know people stick around their abusive parents because they can get money, but I decided it wasn't worth it. Good for you. I would have to wait 30 years or so until they die just to get their money. I would rather use that 30 years being happy and, and free of their control. They have been determined to succeed and I have been trying. I had to pay 650 out of pocket this time for my last semester and they were probably bummed that I didn't come to them for money at all this time. All they want is to control me with their money and she makes everything about money for some reason because money is her ultimate source of control. You're still young enough that you can definitely be controlled by money. You're trying to get your education and it's a go-to for her. It's easy. I'm just sitting here thinking what the hell because it's not about the money and I am not going to take several steps backwards and subject myself to her abuse again. 
Flash forward to now, the day of my graduation, May 13th, congratulations. I have worked so hard to get my bachelor's degree and I do not think I would have made it here had I not gone no contact just eight months ago. I invited my in-laws and had a small party, invited one friend. It was great. There was no chaos and no snide comments. I am free to be myself. I wasn't sure what to expect this morning going to, into the graduation. I assume that this could pan out in several ways since graduation info is available to the public and anyone can go. I thought that they either won't show up or they do, or if they do show up, my mom makes a scene. Or they show up, take pictures of me from a distance, then post them on social media saying, oh look, we raised our daughter, we're great parents. No one saw my parents at the graduation, but my mother-in-law received a message from her saying to let me know that they, are, that they were there. And I was just like, okay, do they expect for me to think they're act, they actually care? Because I feel like they don't. I get home after a long day and then I checked my bank account. And then I checked my bank accounts. A while ago, I was still in contact with them. My dad had the routing number to my bank account and my brother's account so he could send birthday and holiday money to us. To their <coughs> Today, there had been a $200 transfer into my account, and I knew it was them. I feel weird, and I don't want their money. I think I'll just leave it there, but I'm not sure if they can withdraw their charge. For now, it's just remaining untouched. Uh, if it's in your account, they can't, re they can't withdraw it at this point. For now, it's remaining untouched. Otherwise, they do not have actual access into my bank accounts or anything. I consider changing all our all our accounts one day but I never got around to it because then my husband would have to change it through his work and I feel and it feel like a hassle ah, it's not a big deal anymore I would change them it really is and they could do it in five minutes then even though my phone is supposed to spam and redirect our messages I suddenly got a text saying we sent you a gift through bank account for graduation we saw the ceremony it's like they expect it's like they expect for me to just talk to them and suddenly say thank you. Yeah, they do. They do. They're trying a little bribery. They're trying a little, we can still get to you. They're trying to bribe you and tell you we can still get to you and see you anytime we want at the same time. But this is minor. This is minor. I mean, at a college graduation, you didn't, like you said, you didn't even see them. You didn't even know you were there. And you did the best thing. You had a party to celebrate with the people who really mattered in your life. I received a text message this morning from Golden Child Brother, who is Mom's Flying Monkey. He says, "You, you able? are you able to get Mom's text messages? Mom is feeling that you have isolated her, you have isolated from her in the past couple months. She feels that? She already knows that. This is, this is sad. She has been very upset about it for a long time. What's going on? She asked me to pass on the message that they send money to your account as a graduation gift. Wow, 200 bucks for their only daughter's college graduation. Now, granted, your father did spend, did, did pay a lot towards it, but whatever. They're, they're trying to buy you. That's what you're worth. 200 bucks. That's what, that's what your self-respect, that's what, your, that's what your, your mental health is worth to them. 200 bucks. I don't think so. I'm honestly surprised that they would even send money to me after accusing me of scamming them, saying I only want their money. She plays the victim and has tried to get everyone against me. It is ridiculous and I don't care about them. I considered texting them back something like, this isn't over a small fight. I am protecting myself from her abusive behavior. She knows deep down the reasons why I don't talk to her. I don't trust him or her. My dad and brother are her enablers. I am certain that this gift is really because she wants me to contact her, and I know they don't care about me otherwise. Well, you got that right. And that's just what it is. The narcissist is always going to try to buy you somehow. And that's what she did. They're trying to buy your self-respect. They're trying to buy you. They're trying to buy yourself.
They're trying to buy for $200. They are trying. They are trying to pay off being poisoned, the abuse through school, the sabotaging, the living in a hoarded hat. 200 bucks, huh? 200 bucks. That's sad. But thank you for your contribution, Sophia. I know getting out of college, money, money's tight and all, so I really appreciate it and really thank you for your story. Uh, very well put together, um, really well thought out. And, you know, you're, you're definitely on the right path because you're already in tune to her tactics and you've already seen through many of the things. Because like I said, I read these letters cold, so you get, you're getting a natural reaction. So even as I, as I was reacting, usually your next line was confirming what I had just re how I had just reacted to. As you were seeing your mom for what she is, you were seeing her tactics for what they are. Okay? And the final, and the final thing, $200 is supposed to make up for all the abuse in your life. I don't think, I don't think so. So thank you again. Uh, thank you to everybody who's watched. Uh, please leave your comments, any, uh, any advice or comments in the comments section below. Again, I'm making videos all day today. So if you want a video made for you, I can have one for today. Just make a contribution to the PayPal link in the description box below and I will have it right out to you. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks everybody for watching. See you all again soon.